This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Get 75% off a free year plan and an extra month for free by going to nordvpn.com slash nameexplain and by using the promo code nameexplain. Let me set a scene for you. It's a late night and you're lost in the woods. Stumbling to find a way out, you see a light in front of you, going towards it in hope that it might be a way home. However, the closer you get, you realize the light is not of human creation. In fact, the light is one of extraterrestrial origin. The light is blinding, but in front of you is a figure unlike any you have seen before, the figure of an alien life form. This is just one way you could bump into an alien life form. You could meet one as an explorer on a new planet, or in the middle of a crop field, or maybe from breaking into Area 51. I mean, they can't stop us all I guess. However, it doesn't matter how you meet one. The fact is, here you are with an alien standing right in front of you. Now what do you do? The obvious answer would be to try and talk to it, to explain that you are not a threat, and of course for our sake find out their name, whether that be the name for the alien personally or the name for their race, if these aliens even have either of these things. And that's the real problem here. We have no idea how these creatures would communicate with one another, let alone with creatures from a completely different planet. Imagine being face to face with something so completely, well, alien pun intended. Even talking to someone who speaks a language completely different to you with no knowledge of the language you speak, there's still basic human traits we can share with one another like hand gestures, facial expressions, and pictures and symbols. With aliens however, this probably wouldn't be the case. They may not have hands or faces to express with, and the hand gestures and faces we make would mean nothing to them. Same with pictures and symbols. I even looked into how deaf blind people communicate as perhaps a starting point, but even these forms of communication start with some basic innate human understanding. If this sounds interesting then don't worry as I think a video about deaf blind communication will happen one day too. I mean we could hope that these aliens have evolved and formed societies so similar to us humans that communication would be just like talking to another human. Or we could hope that these aliens are so much more advanced than us than they have already figured out how to communicate with us, making us the confused guinea pigs in their experiments. However those are pretty slim chances. So if there was one right in front of you, how on earth would you talk to it and find out its name? The first hurdle to come over would be to find out if it even has a name. Names are completely human made ideas. We're the only animals on our planet that have given ourselves names, and dolphins too kind of, and in turn we gave everything else on the planet and even beyond it a name. We could presume that aliens might be the same in their own language, but this really may not be the case. The image we have of alien life derives heavily from popular culture, where perhaps the most iconic image of an alien comes from the classic little green man look, with the big eyes and bulbous heads. These kinds of aliens inspired by popular culture are very human like in the way they present themselves, but this really might not be the case. The first alien we discover could be the equivalent of a space dog, or the first extraterrestrial life could simply be a life form as simple as bacteria. In fact, some believe that the microscopic, almost indestructible tardigrades are aliens, brought to this planet via a meteorite, hence why they can withstand so much from freezing temperatures, literally being thrown into volcanoes, and yes, they can even survive in space. While it would be impressive to find any kind of alien, what we are after is one with intelligence like our own, one that can engage with others of its own kind and form societies and an advanced way of communicating. The things we are looking for are consciousness, sentience and awareness, three of the key things that make us humans different to all other animals. Though of course it's believed many other animals on our planet may have these things too, it's a fascinating field of research that keeps on developing. Like magpies who are the only non-mammal to recognise themselves in a mirror, and it's thought they even feel grief for other magpies' deaths and whole funerals for them. To me, these seem like signs of consciousness, sentience, and awareness. An alien that's able to give itself a name would most likely have these three traits. So, when you first stumble across one, observe it. How is it acting? In my opinion, there's probably four ways it could be acting. It could just be acting in a completely alien manner, say like floating around in a jumbled mess or even in a way we are beyond understanding. It could be acting like a lower intelligence animal, say it's wiggling around on the ground like a worm or stomping around like a lizard. It could be acting like a more intelligent animal, like a dog observing its surroundings, or it could be acting like a human, maybe pointing directly at you and really investigating its surroundings. Imagine how you would react if you ended up on a completely different planet. In all honesty, researching this part is making me delve into philosophical arguments about what is consciousness and are we even self-aware, stuff my tiny name riddled brain can barely handle. Let's say you lucked out and you feel that out of the four ways I described an alien could be acting, it was the last one. In a way, human would act if it ended up on a distant planet. You feel confident that it has a level of consciousness around the same level as yours and you feel it will be able to communicate in some way. Now what do you do? Well if it hasn't killed you yet, I feel the first thing you should do is simply look at it. Does it have any human quality to it at all? I think the most important thing to do would check if it has either eyes or ears, ideally both. 
These are the two primary senses us humans use to receive language, so if an alien had these, we could hope it would be able to at least hear our language and see our messages, even if they have no clue what it means. Of course, some kind of mouth would be good too. However, despite how important our mouths are to us for language, this might not be the case for aliens. Think of all the animals that have mouths on our planet but just use them for eating. This could very well be the case for aliens too, but like I said, if you can't find a mouth, don't be too concerned. If it has ears and or eyes, we can guess it can intake language and communicate. It might just not output language and communication via a mouth like we do. At this point, we've seen an alien decide that it has a human-like level of intelligence and consciousness, figured out it has eyes and ears, and maybe a mouth. Once again, what's the next step? I think it would be simply to talk to and see what happens. If it is as intelligent as we might think, then I feel it would respond in some way or another. And my theory as to why this is, is simply because we do the exact same thing with species we can't talk to. Think about pets. How often do you talk to your pet even though they can't really understand you? If my dog barks, I tend to go to her and say something like, what's up? Or what's the matter? I even talk regularly to Bowser the tortoise, but he hasn't said anything back yet. My idea for us and the aliens is very much like this, except we are the barking dog. I'd hope if we were to make some sort of sound like a pet dog, the alien would respond like we do to our pets. The next question though is how would it respond? In an ideal scenario, it would respond with a sound from its mouth, and more ideally would actually be able to hear it. We humans communicate between 85 to 255 hertz, so there's a chance that an alien wouldn't communicate at this frequency range. If they don't, luckily we can use technology to change the pitch or slow it down or speed it up, much like we do with whale song. So let's say the alien does speak at our frequency, and yes I know we are taking a lot of liberties with this idea, but this idea as a whole is kind of silly anyway. This could be one of two things, either some sort of generic sound this creature makes like a cow's moo or a sheep's bar, but hopefully this could be it saying something back to you in its alien language. If it is, this is great. Now we just need to figure out this language. So how on earth do we figure out a completely alien language? While we haven't actually done this on our planet because we haven't made contact with aliens, I feel the closest we've got to this is with figuring out languages of uncontacted tribes. This has been done across the globe, even with languages that share no similarities with others. It seems a key way this is achieved by field linguists is through a method called monolingual fieldwork, which has been used noticeably by linguist Daniel Everett, who used it to translate the language of a tribe of people in Brazil. There's many videos of this method in action which I would seriously recommend checking out, but it seems how it works is that you present an object to a person, in this case our alien and say in your language its name, and hope they say its name back in their language, over time building up a vocabulary of words in their language. We could try this with the alien, but of course this might be hard, as the things we have on Earth they probably won't have on their planet. However, there must be something we both have on our planets. When I was thinking about this, rocks came to mind. We know for sure other planets have rocks, so we could hope their planet might too. If we held up a rock, pointed to it, and said rock, we could hope the alien would say it back in its own language. Then this could lead us to think about other things our planets may have in common. They may both have water too. However, the things our planet and other planets have in common for sure is not the stuff on them, but what surrounds them. It'd be most likely that our alien friend would see the stars from their home planet like we do, so we could use stars as an object to point at and in turn find out what they are called in their language. If this works as we expect it to, we could then use ourselves as an object. If I were with an alien, I could point to myself and say Patrick, and then hope it would point to itself and say its own name, and thus we would have found out the alien's name. However, of course, this is all just the best case scenario. There's the chance that all the names of things we thought the alien was giving us was just a gargled mess. And once again, there's the chance the alien could just kill us on sight. And like I said earlier, this is if the alien speaks a language in the way we speak language, for our mouths with words and phrases. There's all kinds of other ways aliens could communicate with sound that isn't language. In example, they could use tones and sounds at different volumes to communicate with one another. Or like I said, they might not use sound at all. We have animals on our planet that communicate without sound. We have animals like the Caribbean reef squid that changes colour to communicate with others. Bees that do little dances to alert other bees about things. African mole rats bang their heads on their underground tunnels to send messages to others. Some fish discharge electricity to talk to others. It's believed ravens can use a form of sign language. Mantis shrimps use their impressive eyes to bounce light off themselves, only they can see to communicate with other shrimps. And most impressively, rhinos can leave messages for each other in their poop. 
don't ask. So there's a chance our alien might very well communicate in a way like this. And if it communicates like the rhinos, then remember to pack some gloves. However, there's also the last chance that they might do something completely alien. Once again, pun intended. A way of communicating that's unseen and unheard of here on Earth. They could communicate through liquid or gas or something else completely crazy that we simply don't know about. If this is the case, then I don't think we're completely screwed. It would just take longer to decipher. As I mentioned with animals, we've been able to figure out what some animals are saying when they communicate in their own ways. So with time, we could hopefully figure out what aliens are saying. And of course, find out their names. Now, I very well understand how odd this video was. A lot of it was my own theorizing and speculation. But that's the fun thing. We know so little about what is beyond our blue marble that we can speculate away on matters like this without being proved right or wrong. Well, until they visit us anyway. Now, you've heard me speculate for long enough. So what about you guys? How would you find out an alien's name? A question I can answer with much more confidence, however, is what is the best VPN I've ever used? And that has to go to NordVPN, who have very kindly sponsored today's video. As I mentioned, Nord are my personal favorite VPN of choice. Aliens can be pretty scary things, but they are nowhere near as scary as an unsecured public Wi-Fi spot. If you connect to one of these, your information could easily be accessed by others on the network, and they could store your information. With Nord on your device of choice, however, you can choose from thousands of servers across many countries, meaning your connection is secure no matter where you are in the world. And speaking of being anywhere in the world, Nord allows you to access the internet as if you were in any part of the world. I could be all the way in China, but connect to one of Nord's UK-based servers, and I'll be able to access the internet as if I'd never left my house. This is great because it allows you to bypass any internet restrictions that any country may have. This might sound super complex, but Nord's clean design makes it a breeze to use. And any issue you may have, their 24-7 customer support is always there to help. NordVPN are offering viewers of Name Explain the amazing deal of 75% of a free year plan and an extra month for free by going to nordvpn.com slash nameexplain, which will be down in the description, and by using the promo code nameexplain. So why not get your online life protected and make sure you can handle anything the internet may throw at you? Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and once again, that's nordvpn.com slash nameexplain, and promo code nameexplain. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.